There are 62 lifts in North America that are being built for this upcoming ski season. I'm going to give you some thoughts on each one, such as a summary of what's happening and predictions on impact to the skiing experience. There are so many projects that we're going to have to split this into two parts. Today we're discussing the West Coast, and in part two, we'll discuss the Midwest and East Coast. So buckle up because this is going to be a long one, or skip ahead to the ski areas you're interested in using the chapters I've marked. And credit where credit's due, this list is based mostly on articles and databases from liftblog.com, but I've independently verified that these projects are going on through social media, webcams, press releases, or other means, unless I denote otherwise. Although I'm a bit of a lift nerd myself, I'm not going to bore you with statistics and technicalities, but will rather focus on how the lift improves the skiing experience at each resort. We've got a lot to cover, so let's not waste any more time. Here is a full breakdown of the 2023 North American lift projects. We'll start up in the Great White North with Marmot Basin, Alberta. They're building a fixed grip quad to replace their oldest lift, the obsolete knob double, in a different alignment than the old chair. It'll feature a loading carpet for easier loading and to allow the lift to run faster. The new lift will start further down the hill, allowing for access from runs down to S turns, and will end higher up on the ridge, shortening the hike to all of the high alpine expert terrain unmarked on this map. Marmot opened an expert terrain expansion in this area, called the Cirque, last season in anticipation of this new knob. With the additional capacity and longer alignment, this lift is sure to massively improve the expert experience at Marmot. They're looking to become a household name for extreme terrain, and this chairlift is the first step to accomplishing that. Jumping over to British Columbia, Whitewater is building a new fixed grip quad called Queens. Built on the Silver King side of the mountain, this lift will serve two purposes. The first is to augment the existing Silver King Double, an awesome classic Murray Lotta built in 1972 in its original location at Whistler Blackcomb. This is the oldest and lowest capacity lift at Whitewater, meaning it gets the longest lines of up to 10 minutes on the busiest days, and probably requires the most maintenance. The other big purpose is to open a 160 acre expansion consisting of a few groomers and a whole lot of gladed skiing. The ski area is already known as one of the best powder mountains around, and more terrain to get that steep and deep is certainly welcome. Whitewater is already a great ski area, and this lift is only going to make it better. Heading west, we come across one of the biggest projects of this summer, as Whistler Blackcomb, British Columbia constructs their new Fitzsimmons Express. This detachable 8-seater was originally manufactured for Park City, Utah, hence the color, but instead finds itself in Canada by way of a bunch of political BS. This new Fitzsimmons won't have a huge impact on skiing, but it will have a massive impact on bike park ops, as Fitzsimmons is the workhorse for that. A boost in out-of-base capacity will really help smooth out summer ops, as the wider chairs will allow for 5 bikes per chair. This will speed up lines and get people on the mountain faster. It'll do the same in winter, just not to the same extent, since you have to ride Garbanzo to get anywhere. It'll be a nice alternative to the gondola though, and should indirectly shorten those lines. Next, we'll go to a much smaller ski area. Mount Seymour, British Columbia, is currently building a new fixed grip quad chairlift to replace their old lodge double. The old chairlift was a classic 1985 Bueller double with lattice towers, so the lift nut in me is a touch sad to see it go. The new chairlift, however, will provide a 70% increase in capacity in that pod, significantly decreasing lines. The new chairlift will also go much faster than the old, which is another factor that'll allow for more laps. It's coming with a loading carpet, which will reduce misloads and increase efficiency. Although I've never skied Mount Seymour, I can tell from the trail map and photos that the Lodge pod has all the makings of an ever-popular blue cruiser pod, meaning it probably needs the capacity boost it is receiving. And at minimum, Seymour is prepared for future growth. Down in the United States, Stevens Pass, Washington is building a new fixed grip quad to replace its old CARES double. This direct replacement is only for capacity and age, as the new lift should nearly double the old capacity, and the old lift was, well, old. This should help with those notorious lift lines that made national news two seasons ago, and will allow easier access to the backside via double diamond as an alternative to hogs back to time ill. I personally believe this is also PR motivated, as Stevens' reputation is still recovering from that disaster of a 21-22 season, so Vail Resorts wants to show they care by investing in the resort. The resort's lift infrastructure is actually pretty modern, so this was one of the few lifts left to replace, and being a base lift, it was an easy choice despite the need for an employee housing investment. 
Stevens Pass's neighbor to the south, the summit at Snoqualmie, more specifically Alpenthal, are currently building a new fixed grip triple to replace the Cecil lift. For now, it's serving one purpose, replacing the old Cecil double, which was one of the oldest in the whole of the resort. This means higher reliability and capacity, enabling quicker laps down the Cecil Blue. The bigger purpose of this lift is to be the gateway to the future International lift, which is being built over this summer and the next. International is going to be a massive addition to Alpenthal, allowing for an easier alternative to the Edelweiss lift to access the back pulls and a way to lap all of this inbound, advanced, and expert terrain. Cecil itself is not a huge addition to Alpenthal, but the major transformation that it's part of is indeed a huge addition to the resort. On the infamous Oregon volcano Mount Hood, the ski area Mount Hood Meadows is installing a huge new detachable six-pack. This will replace the Mount Hood Express detachable quad and will receive the same moniker. The Mount Hood Express is the main out-of-base lift at Hood Meadows. Yeah, there are a couple of other detachable quads, but Hood Express was the oldest and typically got the longest lines. What they're doing with this new lift is decreasing maintenance and massively increasing capacity. Of course, all reliable blue should still be around if anything goes wrong with the new lift. For skiers, not much is going to change apart from lines being a lot shorter and quicker moving. But hey, it's a shiny new chairlift and I'm all for it. The new LPA chairs are probably going to be way more comfortable than the old Poma Arceau carriers anyway. Our other Oregon upgrade this year is occurring at Mount Bachelor, who, just like Hood Meadows, are building a huge new detachable six-pack. Two seasons ago, during the 2021-22 season, the Skyliner Express detachable quad suffered a catastrophic breakdown that left it out of service for the last couple months of the season. When that happened, Bachelor ordered a new six-pack to replace it, but since they ordered it so late, they weren't able to get it in time for installation last summer. As such, Bachelor and Doppelmeyer completed repairs to allow Skyliner to run for one last season before she was finally retired. The biggest improvement with the upgrade is reliability. Skiers won't notice much of a difference, except that the new lift won't be closed for maintenance as often. It'll also have a huge capacity boost, meaning way shorter and quicker lines. Together, that's a huge win. Let's drop on down to Mammoth Mountain, California, where they were still open for skiing at the time of writing. They're currently building a new detachable six-pack to replace the erstwhile canyon detachable quad. I'm not gonna lie, seeing the old Yoppelmeyer go is kinda sad, knowing soon enough there won't be any yawns left in North America. However, the huge boost in capacity on this new Canyon Express will be extremely welcome seeing as Mammoth is known to accumulate, well, Mammoth-sized lift lines on busy weekends and powder days. This new out-of-base workhorse from the Canyon Lodge will land lookers right of the old top terminal, which will allow much easier access to roller coaster and the mill. Like most of the lifts we've discussed before, its purpose is to shorten lines and ease maintenance. It'll be a mammoth improvement, helping with circulation at a colossal resort. Just 28 miles away, also in the Sierra Nevada range, is China Peak, California, who are currently reinstalling the legendary Thunder Quad from Jackson Hole as their new canyon lift. Canyon is one of two base lifts at China Peak, meaning that reliability and capacity are the two priorities with the lift. Receiving a new canyon quad, even though it is used, will offer a huge boost in capacity and will be way less of a maintenance hog than the old Riblet Franken lift that stood there. Canyon offers some nice blue and green groomer laps as well as access to lifts 5, 2, 7, and 4, so pretty much the rest of the mountain. Now I'm not going to go all oh, this is a transformative new lift because it's not. What it is is a key replacement on a core lift in order to keep the whole operation running smoothly. Jumping over a state, let's talk about the ski area keeping the lowest profile of the whole summer. Lee Canyon, Nevada. They're not just quietly building a lift, they're building a whole expansion and they successfully kept it under the radar until the middle of July. The newly named Ponderosa lift, a brand new fixed grip quad, is labeled as lift 5 on this map and will serve a trio of low difficulty runs. Lee Canyon is the only ski resort in the Vegas area, so this expansion is going to be huge, allowing Lee to accommodate many more skiers. This is just the first of several projects that are a part of Lee Canyon's overall expansion plan. The lift will run over to the looker's left of the Sherwood pod and will be connected to Rabbit Peak by a conveyor. This is the start of something huge for Lee Canyon. Next, let's talk about the Big Cottonwood Twins, starting with Brighton, Utah. Brighton is currently building a new detachable six-pack to replace the Crest high-speed quad. The old Crest had a lot of hours, so this upgrade is relatively well due. Crest is the out-of-base workhorse, so it's important that the lift is reliable, which is the aim of this upgrade. While this crest isn't going to offer a large increase in theoretical capacity, the longer load interval and loading carpet will significantly decrease miss loads, which means that lines are still going to move a lot quicker. Crest runs in both seasons, so Crest 6 will be able to carry three bikes on the back of each chair. 
As Brighton's flagship lift, this new Crest 6 is going to really improve overall comfort, from easier loading to quieter terminals, more comfortable chairs, and everything else in between. Right next door to Brighton is Solitude, Utah, who are building a brand new detachable six-pack to replace their old Eagle Express high-speed quad. The old Eagle Express was an extremely unique lift, so it's sad to see it go, but it had been long overdue for an upgrade. I couldn't find the specifics, but hopefully the new Eagle offers a capacity boost as Eagle got some gnarly lines due to the profile of its terrain. Eagle is the centerpiece of this ever-popular intermediate and advanced pod, which makes it a pretty core piece of the resort. The old Eagle was the first detachable in Utah, installed in 1989, so as it aged, it began to require more maintenance. Parts were getting harder to source, and lines were getting longer. Enter this new six-pack. Now, lines in this pod will be less painful, and the lift will be closed less. Next, we have the only private ski area on this list, Wasatch Peaks Ranch, Utah. Since it's private, I was unable to confirm it independently, so we're going to have to trust that lift blog is correct on this one. There's only so much for me to say, as there isn't anything about the project on the internet. They're building a new detachable quad with bubbles, and if I had to guess, heated seats too, which will be their third lift of the kind. It's definitely going to be an expansion lift, and from what little I could find online, I believe this is going to open a whole new pod below the current three lifts and terminate at about the same spot as the existing triple, significantly increasing the total vertical drop of the ski resort. It's a super expensive private ski resort, so they spared no expense with this one. Just north of Wasatch Peaks Ranch is Snow Basin, Utah, who are currently installing a new detachable six-pack called the Des Moisey Express. This lift goes into the category of infill lift, as it's not directly replacing any lift, but it's also not opening an expansion. Instead, this lift is adding additional capacity in the strawberry part of the resort, as the existing strawberry gondola gets overwhelmed and shut down quite often. Not sure why they decided gondola for this pod, but it has proven to be a poor decision. This lift should essentially double capacity in this area, which will lead to much shorter lines. And when Strawberry shuts down because it's literally a giant sail, Des Moisey can still serve the terrain. This new lift is going to instantly boost an already great resort by making some of its best terrain more quick to access, preventing long lift lines and avoiding closures. Heading further north, we come across Sun Valley, Idaho, who are currently executing one of the most ambitious projects of the whole summer, removing two lifts and building two more. We'll start with the direct replacement, Challenger. The Challenger detachable six-pack is replacing the legendary Challenger quad and its sister ship, the Greyhawk quad. Because Greyhawk had its own pod at the bottom of the mountain, the new Challenger has a mid-unload at the top of the old Greyhawk so that that pod is still served. This new Challenger will serve the same massive vertical of its predecessor much faster, as Challenger is going to be one of the fastest lifts around, with a max speed several hundred feet per minute faster than the old lift. Getting visitors from the Warm Springs base to the summit just that much quicker means more laps on the legendary Peekaboo Street, Warm Springs, and Limelight runs, which I could find very few reasons to be opposed to. And the increase in capacity will help take the one minute lines down to zero. The second lift Sun Valley is building is an infill lift called Flying Squirrel. The new Squirrel is technically replacing a lift that was lost to fire in 2014, but in a much different alignment. The new Flying Squirrel detachable quad will depart the Warm Springs base area from right next to the new Challenger and will unload relatively close to the top of the Frenchman's pod. This lift adds some much needed redundancy out of the Warm Springs base, as in the past, if Challenger went down, there was no way out of Warm Springs. In addition, the new Squirrel makes it much quicker to get to the river run side of the mountain than riding all the way up Challenger. Idaho is having a really strong construction season, with four new detachables being built. We just discussed two, and the next we'll discuss is at Brundage Mountain. They're building a new detachable quad to replace the Centennial Triple. The Centennial Express is going to be a massive upgrade, cutting the ride time from an agonizing 14 minutes down to just six, serving some of Brundage's most popular terrain just that much faster. In addition, the lift will have a pretty big capacity jump over the previous, meaning shorter and quicker lines. Having two detachables out of the base area is super significant for the ski area, as it'll make it much less painful when one has to close for maintenance. Many people would avoid the triple because of the long ride time, so this lift attracting people back will really help spread skiers out better across the mountain as well. And to finish Idaho, let's head to Schweitzer. Schweitzer is building a new high-speed quad that, upon first glance, appears simply to be an extended replacement for the old musical chairs double. Being a detachable, it'll be easier to load and unload, and the extended alignment means more peace to learn on. But the bigger picture of this lift is the start of an entire new base area and expansion. A massive new parking lot is planned for the bottom of this new lift, named Creekside Express, which means that this lift will be the access from the new base to the old one. 
A bunch of new trails and other lifts are planned for the expansion, so Creekside will probably only have one or two seasons of being the only way out from the area dubbed Base Camp. This is the first step of something big for Schweitzer. One of the most highly anticipated lifts is in construction at Big Sky, Montana. They're building a new tram to replace the tiny 15-person Lone Peak tram. This new 75-person tram will not initially run at full capacity in order to gauge the capacity of the space and terrain on Lone Peak so as not to overwhelm it. This is a huge improvement over the old tram in many ways. The new tram is more accessible, starting much lower, at the top of a future out-of-base gondola set to open in 2025 and accessible from Swifty. It'll be much more comfortable than the old tram and, of course, will have shorter lines because of the higher capacity. The one gripe I have is that they're charging for each ride separately from a lift ticket, so make wise use of the rides you choose to pay for. The most unique lift of the summer goes to Red Lodge Mountain, Montana, who are currently building a new Miami Beach chair. So what's so special? They're installing a detachable triple chairlift, which came used from Sunnyside at Alta, Utah. You very rarely see detachable triples anywhere, and I'm not sure if anyone would even make them anymore, so I'm glad to see that this one is getting a revitalization at a new mountain. The lift is going into their beginner area, replacing the old fixed grip double chairlift. This will give Red Lodge Mountain a massive jump in the beginner experience, instantly making them relevant for first timers all across Montana. However, I and many Red Lodge skiers out there would have preferred to see the triple replaced instead, as it's the only out of base lift to get to the main mountain, so it could use a capacity boost. Next, let's jump all the way down to Steve Moat, Colorado, who are currently constructing the longest gondola in North America and a massive terrain expansion. Steamboat's big name project this summer is finishing the Wild Blue Gondola, which will be an absolute people mover when finished. This base to summit gondola is going to serve two functions, alleviating lines at the base and providing easy access to the beginner area constructed last year, Greenhorn Ranch. In the first capacity, the gondola is going to be a huge improvement, adding thousands of people per hour to the capacity out of the base. Those massive lift lines twisting way back through the village? Well, they'll probably only be half as long, as some people will go to Wild Blue and some will go to the Steamboat Gondola. Altogether, that'll make a huge difference in the Steamboat experience, allowing people to get on the mountain just that much faster. It already serves its second capacity, bringing people up to the Greenhorn Ranch, as that only necessitates riding Stage 1, which was completed last summer. Wild Blue Stage 2 will absolutely fly, as it will be the fastest 10-person gondola in North America, moving people out of the base and up to the ever-popular Sundown, Sunshine, and Storm Peak areas of the mountain. The other lift being built is a detachable quad called Mahogany Ridge. This is opening a new advanced and expert level terrain expansion to the north of the existing Pony Express pod, which will add over 600 acres of gladed skiing, significantly enhancing the expert skier's experience at Steamboat. The choice for a detachable will make sure that there are never lines and that plenty of laps can be had through a quick ride time. Sounds a lot like the existing Pony Express pod. Looking on down to Winter Park, Colorado, a new detachable six-pack is being built to replace one of the oldest detachable quads that was left in North America. The new Wild Spur Express is the gateway to a massive future expansion west as designed in the resort's 2022 master plan. The massive capacity boost it'll have over the old Pioneer Express quad will not only help with the lines that amass at the bottom of Vasquez, but will also help alleviate some of the lines from the Olympia Express as people choose to take wagon train down to Wild Spur instead of waiting in line for Olympia. The biggest improvement, however, will be a new mid-load at the top of the notoriously flat and slow Big Valley runout. This will make it much more pleasant to lap what is, quite frankly, the only true blue groomer pod at Winter Park. Our next two resorts are both Vail resorts in Summit County. We'll start with Keystone, who are currently finishing their Bergman Bowl expansion, although it's really more of a redesignation. A new detachable six-pack, dubbed Bergman Express, will serve a pod of 550 acres of high alpine previously advanced terrain, redesignated to beginner and intermediate. It will also provide easy access to all of the other bowls that you used to have to hike from the outpost to access. A six-pack was chosen over a quad for wind stability purposes, as the Bergman Bowl is very exposed above treeline. This lift will significantly add to the intermediate experience at Keystone, as it allows people to escape the crowds at Montezuma and the trek all the way to the outback. It will also allow for lower level of skiers to experience high alpine skiing, which is not possible at most other resorts. The next Summit County Vale resort to be discussed is, of course, my favorite resort anywhere, Breckenridge. For those who don't watch the channel regularly, that was a joke. I strongly dislike Breckenridge. They're building a new detachable quad to replace their old five-chair double. The name of this new lift? 
5 Super Chair. I know, right? So creative. This is the final lift to be replaced in the base area of Peak 8, as once 5 opens, Peak 8's base will be all detachables. I wasn't so sure about the Chair 7 replacement last year, but I will give them credit, as this lift will really help decrease lines on the Colorado Super Chair. That is assuming that the bottom is actually accessible. If it is, this will be a huge upgrade in the Peak 8 experience, allowing for quicker and easier laps on these greens and the terrain park. Next, we head west to Aspen Mountain, Colorado, who are in the process of building the much-anticipated Heroes expansion. This 153-acre intermediate and advanced expansion at the top of Aspen Mountain is going to be anchored by a detachable quad named Heroes. This whole expansion, but especially the lift, are crucial to improving upper mountain circulation, namely taking pressure off of the Ajax Express. This will be their first expansion since 1985 and first lift project since 2004, so needless to say, people are pretty excited about it. Aspen Mountain is legendary, and this is only adding on to its legacy, creating more legendary terrain for everyone to explore. Since the pod is at the top and the gondola isn't getting a capacity boost, it means there's going to be more terrain for about the same amount of skiers, so the whole mountain should feel less crowded. That's a nice bonus. Down in the southwest corner of Colorado, the on-the-rise independent ski area Wolf Creek previewed in early September their upcoming 8th chairlift, which was kept entirely under wraps until that point. The new fixed grip quad, proposed to be called Tumbler, will serve a small beginner terrain pod between the Elma lift and base area. This rare autumn surprise announcement will not have a large impact on most skiers at Wolf Creek, but it will have a huge impact for the small percentage of visitors that are beginner skiers. Currently, the only existing green terrain is in the Raven and Charity pods, so this will be a huge increase in that terrain and will help spread those skiers out. As Wolf Creek continues to get more and more popular, unflashy infrastructure upgrades like this are critical to keeping the skiing experience as good as possible for all visitor demographics. For the final ski resort in this part of the breakdown, let's jump down to Taos, New Mexico, who are in the midst of not one, but two lift projects this summer. The first of these is replacing their beginner fixed grip triple, Pioneer, with a brand new, get this, beginner fixed grip triple. I'm honestly not too sure why this is happening, as this shouldn't really be an upgrade in speed or capacity. My guess is that the old Pioneer, since it was relocated from Deer Valley, was a maintenance nightmare in some way or another, and as such, required replacement. If that's the case, then the difference for your everyday skier is that it won't be closed as often. But hey, the new lift looks pretty. The other project going on is just slightly larger. That project is the replacement of Chair 4, the Kachina Basin lift, with a new detachable quad. It's going to look pretty much exactly like their existing detachable quad, Chair 1, so here's a picture of that for reference. Chair 4 is the second longest lift in the resort, and its old ride time of nearly 10 minutes with no stops could be agonizing at best. While it won't have an increase in theoretical capacity, the new lift being detachable will lead to fewer missed loads and unloads, meaning the effective capacity is going to be higher, moving lines just a little bit quicker. The major impact, however, is going to be a ride time decreased to under 5 minutes, which will allow for extra laps. This Chair 4 pod is some of the most popular in the resort, so this upgrade is extremely important to ensure the reliability of lift service in the pod and increase comfort by speeding up weight and ride times. We'll stop it here, having gone over all of the West Coast lift projects. Go ahead and watch the second part of this video about all the rest of the North American lift projects going on this summer, or go check out one of our Insider's Guide videos. If you made it all the way through this video, I really appreciate you for watching. As always, please leave any questions down below. I'd also love to hear all of y'all's opinions on these lift projects down below as well. Once again, thank you for watching. All my love, I'm out.